What's up, dude? How are you? I'm chilling, brother. I, th- I appreciate you coming out here. I appreciate it's you. It's fucking like awesome it. to meet yeah. you. I appreciate you. Brother, we should like lock it up like I'm Predator. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a Danny. Yeah, <laughs> 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 too many papers. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got a fucking cool story, and I hit you up like less than what a week ago on Instagram. Dude, we connected five days ago or something. Yeah, shit. and you flew from France. Damn right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not just for this. Doing other stuff. That's how we do it. Yeah, man. He makes it happen. It's committed. Uh, so I've been watching some of the stuff you've been putting out on social media, like Instagram. Yep. You've been, I mean, obviously we have a lot in common, the tattoos, the beautiful mugs we both have. Uh, just handsome guys, you know, that's that's the thing. You can't, know? can't put us in a box. That's right. That's right. No, but for real, um, I appreciate you coming out. And I'm super stoked to chat about like where you come from, what you've done, and just tell us more about your story and get to know you better, brother. Absolutely, bro. And dude, I appreciate it because what I push is self-awareness. Right. And part of self-awareness is knowing what you don't know. Right. And so for me, man, I could I could put people on some game on mindset. I've been a Navy SEAL and I'm a French Foreign Legionnaire, the only person to do both. I know how to push past boundaries, but guess what I don't know? I don't know the business world. I don't know the private sector game. Right. And so that's why I would you have got to be able to strip your ego away. And be like, you know what, man? I got to reach out to another man for help and kind of let's let's learn Absolutely. some stuff. So that's that's why I'm really glad to be here because you know you build connections, yeah. and that's that's what's going to get you to that next level. And what's so uncommon in all of the spaces, whether it be fitness, the mindset, the business space, is finding somebody that you kind of connect with on multiple levels. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You, you being a military guy, me being in the Marine Corps in the past, well, you being a Navy SEAL, then a French Foreign Legionnaire, which we'll get into. Yep. Um, one, I connect with any military guy usually yeah, pretty absolutely. quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Like just something in common. And then having, you know, obviously, you know, going to the gym, fitness is being a priority. Like, oh, dude, I fucking got mad yeah. respect for that guy. And then you go and you connect on multiple other levels. That's when you can see that, you know, there's really uh, a connection there and that you could potentially do business together. You can have a better relationship with someone and things happen and grow so much, so much further when you work with other people. You know what I'm saying? What I'm Yeah. I mean, you being a teams guy in the past, I mean, you can't run an operation on your own. You can't run a fucking business on your own either. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to. No. I mean, it's not fun. No, because there's people like you and I that are really good at things. Like I'm a visionary when it comes to business. Like I like to see the big picture. I like to build this dream. I like to see all the pieces, but you're not going to see me get super excited about getting on QuickBooks (laughs) or fucking Excel spreadsheets. You know what I'm saying, dude? Like you want to make me feel like I want to commit suicide? Yeah. Stick me in the office for yeah. too fucking long and have me underwriting and doing all this stuff. But there's other people that wouldn't be so fearful right now of being behind the camera yeah. or of just walking around or going to the gym, you know, that yeah. weird feeling they first have. And so uh, it takes all kinds is what I'm getting at here. Yeah. Yeah. Man, and I was planning my out, right? And so I'm seeing light at the end of this tunnel, I'm about to finish my contract at the French Foreign Legion. And I'm like, man... I have got to get spun up on some game here. And I also have a message I want to put out. I also want, it was kind of eating outside. I, I had some things to share because man, I had dipped low, right? right? Before I got into the Legion, I was at a, a suicidal state, wow. like for real. And it was because I wasn't living right. It was just because I wasn't living right, man. And I had to lose everything. Everything, and then like, like yourself, homeless in my truck with the sod off. On no my shit, lap. dead serious. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this. So this is the state, you know. And it was Adderall, Xanax, alcohol, weed, just everything every day. Because trying to disconnect yourself from where you're at. It just, I was just going a million miles an hour, thinking it was the cool thing. Not even just what it was supposed to be. Oh, doing. really? Right. I was just like, man, this is just how, how you live. Yeah, you just yeah. full tilt and it and I fucking crash and burn, you know? Yeah. And I had to unlearn a lot of stuff going into the French Foreign Legion. That you learned from growing up or learned from the SEAL teams? Learn from the whole time. Just this incorrect programming of what a fucking real man was. Yeah. Right? That's and I'm sure you've experienced oh. some of that too in the Marine Corps and every the guys watching this know it's like who can party the hardest? Who can do it the most days? I thought that was the jam. And I'm really liking the movement nowadays. It's like, who can be the most fucking locked on? Absolutely. Because that's the real OGs. I mean, if you look at like real commanders, if we were to go back and talk about war movies or like real events in history, those dudes that would press on, those real leaders were more squared away. You know, and I think what happens a lot of times, I'll speak for only the Marine Corps culture, uh, but the military culture too, 
is it's exactly like you said. It's like, I'm going to go fucking hard in the paint. I remember being up partying and then walking right into PT at four in the morning. Wasted what? as fuck. <laughs> yeah, just, you know what I'm saying? And that, that was in formation. I'm, and that was champion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was yeah, champion. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I did, I, I had a struggle with, uh, the, with when I got out with like continuing that same path. It similar, sounds like yes. it's similar to you. Yes, and that's exactly what it was. And now I didn't have any any squared away yeah i had nothing holding me back yeah. i had no sanity check now there was no so, time to check in it for you you know the governor was off bro you know so i was like okay let's just do this yeah and here's also the other part is i was experiencing levels of success throughout this time so i could lie to myself uh, which is so i moved right into actually working for the largest private developer in the united states on uh, a 750 million dollar project is like the two-man wow and i and i know how to run teams and get information but i didn't know anything about building yeah so i was just doing it and so i could touch this success people were like you know beautiful girlfriend living by the beach all this yeah, stuff, navy seal nice Apple truck yeah and now i'm doing this but i'm like nobody can tell me nothing right. i'm obviously doing something right yeah. you know and then it just and then I went into working for a venture capitalist. We launched a marijuana distribution company for the first year it was legal. So now I'm the CEO of that. Now I'm pitching That's right. scale. Like now crazy. I'm pitching decks. Now I'm raising million. Now I'm doing all these moves. And so I could still lie to myself. You know, look at me, I'm I'm big cheese in the high rise. But you can only bend reality so long. Yeah. And I crash and burn on my face, literally. I mean, I did a line of opioids and went face down split my fit in like a business setting yeah like not in a business meeting but face down split up my chicks screaming blood everywhere and yeah i literally fell on my face and yeah. it was over and so you know the big boss was like hey man you gotta you know Picture this is this is your your you were an asset now you're liability and right. that stuck with me hard and that echoed in my head for years what do you think you were looking for at that time yeah I was looking for purpose. I was looking for self-worth. And so I was reaching externally. I was reaching externally for it. And I had it, you know, even in this, for my whole life, I was deliberate as fuck about what I wanted to do, but never deliberate about who I wanted to be. Right. That was, that was where, when I felt that shift in the, and the French Foreign Legion provided me the isolation and the time. Because you're isolated from everything. Yeah, we'll get into the Legion, yeah, yeah, man. Because yeah. it was what I needed, though. I needed to have my identity stripped away, literally. They take they give you a fake name and a fake European social security number and everything. So cut, cut from contacts, cut from language, yeah. cut from and just in like this stark, I needed it. And <laughs> eating humble pie like nothing. Hey, Navy SEAL, come clean this toilet. Yeah. Dead serious. For like years. You go back years, to zero. Years. No shit. Years, years bro. You're a bot. You are shark shit on the bottom of the ocean. And is it because years. you're a French Ford Legionnaire or is it because they know your history a little bit? It was just because you're a Legionnaire. No shit. That's so Everybody's doing the same thing. I probably got a little extra love. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I bet. You're just some fucking guy at the streets. Of Georgia yeah, I, I got a little extra love. Yeah, you know? I'm sure. I wasn't broadcasting the SEAL thing, but you know, things, you know, you get out on the range and send the heat. And they, you know, they're like, right. okay, yeah, you're that. like, okay, that's what's up. Yeah, you're yeah. driving nails. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So that was, that was the jam, bro. And it was, I wasn't good the first year, right? I still had some like slip ups in town, bad nights, you know? Yeah. Without then, with drugs and alcohol? Not drugs. I, that, that, that all got stripped away, but just going too hard you know and still hard on the civilian side like outside or in it, like on time off like a weekend yeah. off what do you do with your time off you go to the bar destructive habits well you go to the bar a hundred because that's all i ever knew i didn't fill that if you don't fill it with something positive you'll fill it with something negative and most of the time i've done very you know deteriorating negative shit is because i've been bored 100 i had nothing to work on yeah had nothing to work on and that continued and then then it was a little tight then a little tighter the second year Right. And then, yeah. oh, now, now I'm going to start waking up. Now, then that kind of fog started to lift. Yeah. And I'm like, I have got to start. I want to help people, but I'm like, I can't help anybody until I'm good, 100% locked right. on. Right. Then something sh clicked. And I'm like, I just do this every day now. Yeah. Like, there's no days off. This is a life sentence for me. So then I just started doing the 2 a.m. wake ups. Like, Full tilt, Matt, everything. Did you do that way before you started posting on social about it? 
I was doing it for years, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. really, I had to, and I didn't, I, truthfully, I wasn't even projecting going on to social media, really. I just knew I needed to feel better. Yeah. And because I wasn't, and I was still dealing with these, these feelings of loss. Yeah. My title, my, I was like, man, I'm still just cut away and detached from my feelings family and friends and yeah just like you yeah and i felt disconnected and so but i was the only thing i could control is what i could control in my immediate environment which just sounds like a small amount man it's <laughs> tight bro <laughs> yeah. it's tight in that very bed for these. man because i'd be getting up and like working out in the bathroom because oh, you're housed with other dudes so i'd be getting up at you know we're getting up at five i'm getting up at four then i'm getting up at 3 30 then i'm working out in the bathroom people think i'm a psychopath yeah but i needed it man. Right. and i probably am they're probably yeah. right <laughs> you gotta kill these negative thoughts man but it and it then i started to feel better you know then that vibration started to get higher and then i started to have that clarity you yeah. know that starts to come over us when we're living in alignment. Yeah. And then when I really just got locked on, I plugged into, and you know exactly what I'm talking about here, Austin, is because it's like people who have never lived locked on don't understand what you the type of energy you can tap into. Absolutely. And you can tap into some serious shit. Like you don't need as much sleep as people say. 100%. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. You, and you can feel good almost all the yeah. time. Yeah, but I didn't know I didn't know that for the longest time, and I had lost that because um, I had such destructive habits, you know. And then so for me, it formed from after the Marine Corps. I started. Uh, I just was drinking because you know when you're stressed out and you run a yeah. business, that's what you do. That's yeah. what you do. So it went from the bars on the weekend, then drinking and having kids. And yep. So I went down more of a cliche, yeah. you know, normal life. You would say wife and kids and that route after. But it was still what you see most people get stuck in. Not a lot of people go to the French Foreign Legion. Yeah, yeah. But most people go out there and get fucking stuck in this. This cycle of, well, you know, I worked really hard today, yeah, and, I, and I'm pushing the business. I'm going to have a beer with the boys and talk. Yeah. We're going to talk shop, you know, I'm going to yeah, talk yeah. money, yeah, and then I'm going to go home, and then maybe we'll go golf and catch some more beers and yeah. get fucking wasted yeah, and yeah. drive home, and then you realize like one one DUI or one yeah. driving accident could fucking yeah. wipe out your kid's yeah. father, and you start thinking like, what the fuck am I doing, and who am I hanging out with? Massive oh. risk, massive risk, and then the cycle of of just feeling like shit every day. You don't know you feel like shit every day. Yeah. Because you just think that's how it is. It's normal. It's normal, bro. Like it's normal. Like five beers a night or a couple glasses of wine or a bottle of night, whatever. Just normal. Cause I was so I mean, you're so fucking hard headed, probably like me, dude. Like you're just like, yeah, well, I still wake up anyway. Yeah, I'll power I'll through. Yeah, one thousand percent. I don't know. Hang over, I just fucking drink some water and keep going. Then I do it again and again and again. And you realize like, dude, this isn't this isn't getting me anywhere. And the subconscious that subconscious you know. thing whispering to us which we all hear, we just don't listen to it because we got the noise all around, all around us. us. It's sucking energy for 1,000%. Bro, let's, so let's go back from, you grew up in San Diego. I did. All right, so what, where'd you go? Did you go to high school, to everything from? Yeah, man, so my pops was a Marine. We actually grew up on, uh, I grew up on the Marine base in Tustin. Okay. In like Orange, the old Chinook base. Oh, okay. It's condos now, man. Yeah, yeah. They, they, oh, they, they, yeah, they, they, smart. <laughs> the government <laughs> sold that when Orange County blew yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's what brought us out there. And then we just stayed in San Diego after he got out. He was six in and out. Yeah. And yeah, man, from, from kindergarten all the way through high Boom, school, just... stayed in uh, kind of right in the middle in Sarah Mesa for the formative part. And then yeah. high school in Poway. Did you well, grow up with middle class, good family or what was yeah, your Well, we had some, my, my dad had some drugs and alcohol issues. So he was yeah. kind of in and out. You know, my parents had a tumultuous relationship he'd be the first one to admit it too like you know cool. you still tight so, with him we we, de we we had our problems but we communicate now because he's on that good program also like he's always been into lifting weights he was a bodybuilder he was like competing in mr east coast oh, and damn. stuff back and so he's we've always connected on that he taught me how to lift weights yeah, yeah. so it's, we've always had a, a, a catch-all there to be able to talk and then now we're both on this trying to just be better people and yeah. he helps people on his side, you know, oh, it's awesome, better bro. and stuff. So it's, it works out really well. And he's cool. Cause I lean into the truth, man. Like my whole thing is just straight authenticity. Like, you can ask me anything. And I find that today people are masters at body language because we, we see so many people and people can sense authenticity a mile away. You can, so you, you can't fake you shit. Around. And we've all seen videos of people. And that's what, honestly, man, that's what I saw on your shit is just authenticity. And it, it wildly apparent who's, who's authentic and who's not. And it's, 
And it just comes it, down to it, being it honest. Is. And I think so many people, when they get on social media, they don't think that they can see that, bro. And you and I, can, and I don't know if everybody has that sense. Maybe not. Think I, think, I think even subconsciously people kind of do. Even yeah, if they're not true. actively they want to ignore it. Yeah, they might not actively, but, you know, not everybody, but yeah, a lot of people do, I think. Yeah, yeah. You, dude, you're right. The same with you. Like, it's all the authenticity. Like, it's just real. Just be, a, and that's all people really need to do in general. Just be a real motherfucker, dude. Stop trying to be somebody you're not, but you have to fix yourself first. And you're only, proud right? of that. and that's what it is. That's what it is. You have, you've got to take that self inventory and know where you're at. Yeah. You At all times. You can't, um, you get lost in the woods, you're going to die if you don't know where you are. Because right. you can't take a bearing and know where you're trying to go. Stop. Literally write that shit down. Where are you at? How are you feeling? What are you doing? Start subtracting shit. And then you're going to start, you're going to start improving. Yeah. And then you can't be good for anybody until you're good yourself. You're going to push all that negativity out. And that was what I realized, I've always thought I was positive, but then I realized, man, I'd have times where I was, I would break character, be completely not able to control my emotions, be violent with people in my life, all that shit, man. Yeah. And I'm like, who, who the fuck is that guy, dude? Like, right. I'm not proud of that guy. And I don't want to wake up with that regret for having, so yes, that self-improvement piece it's all there is. It is. It's all there is. There's nothing else. If you're not trying to self-improve, you are absolutely regressing. A hundred percent. Every day. And that's the truth. So go in, so go in, you're in San Diego, grow up pretty good family. Yeah. You know, my yeah. mom's a teacher. Yeah. It's kind oh, of, cool. my mom's a teacher. So I grew up middle class. Yeah. You know, it, you know, it, I, I had a great childhood. That's why I was skateboards, man, playing yeah, in the canyons. Just, yeah, like, growing up in SD, bro, like sure. my mom's, a, my mom's unbelievable. So I, I really, so sports were Supported 100%. How'd you play? I played uh, football and lacrosse. Cool. So I played like outside linebacker and a little bit of fullback and then lacrosse. And uh, I got kicked out of high school, you know. Oh, so a lot of those opportunities got weed and fighting and whatever. So I Is lost. That why you got kicked out for weed? Yeah. 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 So drug dogs on campus. And Damn. What Isn't that got? fucking crazy, though? This is just off topic. It totally is crazy. Like, you get kicked out of fucking high school for weed. A lot of people get locked up for weed. Now it's fucking completely legal. Now, now, they're, <laughs> what the now they're laughing the way they yes. are. Dude, oh, my God. Anyways, off subject. But so you do that. You go You go to college, right? You I did. Yeah, I mean, it, so I went to uh, a university, a small school that would take me to play two sports. Failed right out. Failed right just out. Because the academics, you just said, fuck it? <laughs> no, man. I was weed, partying. <laughs> just partying. Just got kicked out of a yeah, dorm room. Seven, like, what are you, like 17 like, at this time? 17. Yeah, and, yeah. and I had gotten a huge car accident just months before I left. I ejected out of a lifted tundra God, on man. the freeway, bro. Like, I, I, coming, back from the, coming back from the river. Yeah. Dude, huge-ass scar. Just he, psh, ejected. I don't even know. They were, like, they were shocked I wasn't dead. But I walked out of the hospital like three days later on a cane. So that wasn't setting me up for success. You're like freaking 18 years old. Yeah, that wasn't setting me up for success. So there was that. Failed right out. Go to junior college. Start dealing drugs. Start doing drugs. Start living that whole. Failed again. Tried it again. Two junior college. So three failed schools. Then hit the hard reset. I had, you know, we all have those moments of compression yeah. and expansion. This was yeah. when I was like, I get put in a drug rehab. I get sent to. Um, my dad's like, you gotta get out of here, bro. Like. He took, he, there's a funny, this is a funny story. Actually, he goes, Hey, he came to visit me and he's like, Hey, you gotta you probably should get out of San Diego, man. And I was like, man, dude, I'm going to start this business and I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I know what I'm doing, man. And he, he leans into me and he goes, Taylor, bro, you don't have any fucking shoelaces. <laughs> <laughs> you literally didn't. I know because they take it. So they don't want you to kill yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. In this prison. And I, oh, I remember, you weren't in prison. Where were you at? Dude, I remember. No, it was like a drug, oh, drug, drug, drug okay. like a lockdown facility. Gotcha. gotcha. And I remember looking down at my shoes, bro. And I had no shoelaces. I'm like, I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? <laughs> trying to be, trying yeah. to spit my plan, and I, I don't even have shoelaces. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that just shows, like, how naive we can be, Mo, man. Delusional. You know what I mean? Delusional. 100%. Especially delusional. at that age. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're 18, yeah. right? Yeah. I was, oh, yeah, you think you know everything. 18. Yeah, I, I know everything. Just wild delusion and lack self-awareness on a massive scale. Absolutely. So I, I moved back to Boston, man, moved into uh, where I was born, and into the basement of my aunt and uncle's house. Got locked on, working landscaping, doing like really locked on for mult for a year and a half. Training Muay Thai, just getting up four in the morning, training. Cool. Really locked it on, so I could actually transfer back to University of California Santa Cruz, and that's where I ended up graduating from. But 
here it comes again. There's that ex expansion and that compression. The day I get back to California and get on that big campus and I'm yeah. not isolated anymore, some girl asked me to go out. Okay, let's go. And then I was just right back on it. Like <sighs> right back partying, right back waking up, just full tilt. Yeah. You know, kicked off, pretty much kicked off the campus, but still going to school, working at a bar. And I get arrested in, in that year and a half or two years, probably like seven, eight, nine times. Damn. Stacking misdemeanors. So, but I always knew I was going to the military. Yeah. Right? I always knew. That was my game plan. I wanted to be a SEAL since I was a really young age, but it was later, later, yeah, yeah. later. Right? You were, you were already crushing it. Like, you were already crushing it. That time. So it was 20... 20. Yeah, you're college and you're not. Like, yeah, you're yeah. fucking living. I'm uh, 2021. 20, but uh, then I got out and it was time that later was. You here. graduated? I did. Nice. What did so, you get your degree in? Politics, international nice. relations. Like a but pretty basic because I was like, I'm going to be a doctor. And then I realized that shit's really hard. <laughs> dude, I, dude, I failed organic chemistry so hard that yeah. the guy goes, check that. And I handed my, my paper to the professor and I'm like, here you go. He goes, how'd you do? I said, <laughs> Not gonna be seeing you again, sir. <laughs> yeah, at least I you changed know, my bro. major that yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, the, uh, aptitude's a real thing. Yeah. Like, pe people say, <laughs> fuck, that's good. You can do anything you want. That's not true. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> aptitude is real. I ain't real. playing basketball, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, aptitude's real. So, yeah. and people say, you know, enhance your weaknesses. That's true, but also understand what you're capable of and what you're not. Absolutely. And that's kind of what I, because are you trying to steer the river? Yeah, you know, I like that old, you know, that old quote, don't steer the river. And like, dude, if you're, if it, if you, if there's so much friction going on, there's a, but you have to understand what's just hard and what's yeah. no shit. Most people like, want to call like hard friction. They just keep jumping around too, though. In this day and age, I true, it's, it's, it's a very fine line. It is. It's a very fine line. You have to understand what's not. That's for something, you. bro. Like straight up right now, I'll tell you, I battle with in business. I like, can because see you, because you can see like when you start seeing opportunities and you start learning like financial success. And I'm not 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 saying you don't. I'm just speaking. No, 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 no. Yeah. So Absolutely. when you start, you see opportunity. You're like, holy shit. And then you see a bunch of opportunity because then you start to see how things work. Like I can see how this company works. See how this yep. company works. See how real estate works. So I can do this deal. I do that deal. And then you you can easily get the grass is greener syndrome, but at the same time, are you in a vehicle? Are you in a vehicle that's not going to maximize your potential? Yep. And so that's the that's the dichotomy here, right? Like you could spend all your time trying to do. I'll give you an example, like a super simple example, like fix and flipping a few homes in Oklahoma. What does that scale to versus business over here that can scale to a hundred million dollar exit or something? Okay. Right? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like mm -hmm. so, what does so? There's different lanes, and you do see that when you see that. Um, you, I have a problem with my driven nature, very probably obviously similar to yours, of being like, am I being a quitter by quitting this business that may only make me X amount of dollars? Mm -hmm. That's successful because yeah. when you're doing, when you're successful, more successful than most people in your in, that you grew up with or you're surrounded yeah. with, people would think you're crazy for quitting that. Like I had a hard time relinquishing stop being yeah, a builder. Yeah, but your your scope is your project. Your correct. Vision. Everybody else around you thinks. It's what are you doing? Like you're crazy. So what? What's your That's answer okay. to that? What? How do you? So I'm still continuing to go because what happens for me is like, I'm seeing more and more opportunity. But at the same time, if I were to go 25 years looking for all sorts of fancy opportunities, I would have made more money maybe in one vertical than all. Yeah. Those. So it's it's a it's I don't have an answer. I'm I'm in the middle. I'm in the balance of that right now. Like I know real estate in general is a great vehicle, and there's so many ways to make money in real estate. And That's mm -hmm. another thing that makes it hard for people. It's a very broad subject um but there's no there's no answer i think you what you touched on earlier kind of hits out hit home with me but if it's that difficult if you're trying to bend the river you know but you know for guys like you and i that's yeah that's i have you you see what i'm saying yeah like because you're willing like, i'll, to I'll bend, bend this river a little fucking bit fucking <laughs> shit. you're willing to clean a toilet yeah i'm willing to like go through whatever it takes because yeah. it's just my mentality it's yeah. what we've groomed it's what we've created but it could also be a detriment to you because you may be doing something that's extremely hard extremely excruciating you know you may spend 150 hours a week trying to make a business successful yeah. but is that really creating the life that you want so what i i guess my long-winded answer to, to your question is is it going to give you the lifestyle you want? And then if you, have, if you do the math backwards, yeah. because if you're just out for making a $100 million business or a $200 million business, and you, well, there's no doubt, you and I dedicated ourselves to it. By the time we die, we can get to that objective. Mm. But the, is that the, are you going to live that entire life 
trying to just grow business. It is that what you want? Some people do. Some guys legitimately want to go out and be the CEO of hundreds of million dollar, billion dollar operations yep. and have no care for anything else. Yep. I personally have found that I love traveling. I love living a lifestyle I want to live. I love being able to buy what I want to buy when I want to buy it. But that doesn't, surprisingly enough, you don't need to make, you know, billions of dollars to yep. live a pretty fucking awesome lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a dichotomy there. And I think you do the math backwards. So I'm like, where, like what you said in the elevator on the way up here, you're like, is that is that vehicle going to bring me the lifestyle that I want five years from now? So if people are doing that, if you find somebody in that space and you look at them and they're further down the line mm -hmm. and you say, are they living the life that I want to live? And if they're not, or that space isn't going to bring you that, that vehicle mm -hmm. isn't going to bring you that, then you should probably find something that's more in line with what you want to do. Does that make sense? 1000%. And that's where I started to arrive at on the military side, which yeah. I'm sure you did as well. When you look around, and this isn't me throwing shade, it's just for me personally, I was, man, I want a little freedom with money, with my autonomy, and you're not gonna get a lot of that in the fucking military. No. And so definitely you're not getting it in the French Foreign Legion. So I was like, okay, what you said, what? You have to know what you want. First of all, you have to know who you are right. to even know what you want Yeah. and get clear and that, that's these, these levels that it, we're talking. It is because when you get it though, like when you think you know you want, like I'll give you an example. You think you want like a Lamborghini, right? And then you get it, but it's a materialistic goal, right? Mm -hmm. And so you achieve that materialistic goal. But what, what did that, like, it's like anything else. Yeah, what did you know, that do? Yeah, you get a cool bike. It didn't move kid. the needle that much. It didn't move the needle on your life. Yeah. Like, and so that's what, that's, that's just, that's the struggle, right? It's, it, mine, mine definitely is freedom of movement that I know that that's massive for me. So making money from my fucking phone, being able to make is was massive. That's well said. I've never heard anybody say that, but that's a good way to put it. Freedom of movement. Yeah. That sounds like more military style terminology yeah. too, but freedom of movement. Exactly. Because that's why I got into real estate. Like yeah. if you look at real estate on paper, most people go and buy these fucking courses and programs because they're like, I want freedom in my life. Yeah. I want this passive income mm -hmm. and I want to live freedom. But I agree with you a thousand percent. I'm on the same page. And that's what I've realized though. But you can go down a rabbit hole trying to make so much money to get freedom that you never live the freedom. And most people do. They do. Well, almost everybody does. That you get locked on to not only a location, but an actual building. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I mean like actual <laughs> brick and mortar. You're locked into a title and you're locked in, then you're stacking on the debt, and now you're locked in. The freedom's the new cur freedom's the new currency. That's the new Bingo. flex. This. That's the new flex is how much freedom do you have and real freedom, real freedom. Yeah. Not, yeah. not just, Hey, I can buy what I want. Correct. Can I move how I want? Exactly. Exactly. So let's go back to your story. So you get, you get out of college and you go straight to trying to get into the teams Dude, that the story is actually pretty good because I was terrified of trying out for seals and ending up on a boat. Oh dude. That so, was fucking terrifying. I, that's what, that's probably, I'm not going to play the whole, I, I was going to do, but if you were to, if I looked at the Navy, I was like, okay, so if I fucking drop out of the teams, I'm going to be a fucking cook on a dude, ship. Dude, I'm joining the Marine Corps infantry. At least I know I'm carrying a it's saw. It's real. <laughs> dude, you're undes, undesignated scraping barnacles in the fucking Navy. Dude, That's it. There's guys who are D1 athletes coming in hot who don't make it, who start chipping paint, dude, after. With, for You're signed up for four dude, years I'm plus. I'm like, bro, that was yeah. terrifying to me. So I'm like, look, man. Who's gonna give me a gun and like let me go? I was like, I'll go Marine Corps. That's what I thought, right? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was, so I went in to the officer recruiter. They took a picture of my tattoos and they came back. Fucking no way, bro. So, and they didn't even say no. They and I didn't have my arms. I just had a, all my back. And they said too much of a percentage and some stuff on my leg. What year was that? So people can reference. 2009. Oh yeah. They so this cutting people. They yeah. started cutting people out after the. After yeah, the, the tattoo regs were tight Fuck this yeah. time and. Yeah. They said no. <laughs> they didn't even just say no. They said, fucking, you can't even enlist. No, they wouldn't let you in. They, they, so they put me on a whole lockdown. Like, I couldn't go to anywhere because I was like, okay, Army, they got me, bro. I'll go Green Beret or Ranger or something. Yeah, yeah. And they took, did a preliminary background check and kicked back. They said, we, you can't enlist, bro. And I was like, just for your misdemeanor and shit? Yeah. And it, because I had also had to go to jail I, right out of college. I had to go to jail to commute my probation. So I went four months in county in San Francisco, like Bay Area. <laughs> so, dude, you were winning. No, <laughs> dude, I was just stacking stuff on, man. That was an interesting time. But so Army wouldn't take me. I was scared at this point. I like, I crawled up in the fetal position for like two, three days. I'm like, okay, now I start researching the French Foreign Legion. That's where that kind of comes in my radar. Okay. 
But the truth was I had student loans that my mom had co-signed on and all these like real life things. I can't just pop chocks and roll yeah, yeah. the French Four Legion. So I'm like, okay, I got to really push this. Okay. And I was in San Diego. They rack and stack who's doing better. And the guys at the top obviously get the contracts and they putting out two or three a month. Yeah. So man, I had to, I had to get in shape too, bro. I was 230 something coming out of jail. Like just, yeah. just, just football just fat. Thick. It, it yeah, all yeah, thick, yeah. dude. Not, not all good no. weight, <laughs> but just, you know, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thick, man. And so I, I could not run a mile, could not run a mile. I, I started my first run, 500 meters I made it. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, man, this is gonna be, I think Navy SEALs run, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I kept going, man. I kept going, kept showing up, kept showing up to this training group. What do y'all, I lost 40 pounds in like six weeks. Just puking every you're day. Not, you're not an average, you're not a naturally overweight guy though. No, no. You're no. An athletic dude. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, but I can't run. My yeah. running is terrible. <laughs> So it's good enough to be a Navy SEAL like, by like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Every single run, I'm not a good, I can sprint, but I cannot run long distance. That was difficult. The most difficult part in all my, all my selections have always been the running. It's misery for me. Yeah. But what do you know? My name gets racked. One day I get a contract, took me nine months. Then I get a SEAL contract and then I ship out and do that whole thing, man. Awesome. Yeah. So that was oh, 2010, ship out, do the buds. Do the b- b- big yeah, buds prep, all do that, stuff. all that stuff. Buds two eight four went through all the way. I got lucky, no injuries, no rolls. So you no made it first time through, all the way through eighteen months. Nice. Graduated in July two thousand eleven, and then went to SEAL Team Seven. Awesome. So they do they just allocate to you to a team? Yeah, you can choose your coast. Okay. So in third phase of buds, they say which coast do you want. All the country boys pick the east side. Yeah. You know, and all the all the SoCal bros pick yeah. west side. Fuck yeah, west side. I'm okay. It's in my family. You stay west side, obviously. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, my family's from there, and I, I was. You don't even leave home. I That's didn't. wild. No, I didn't have to leave home. It was that part was cool. That is cool. That's rare to most people in the military. It, man, it was so cool to be able to go to your mom's house on the weekend and eat. probably pros and cons because when you when I was I needed to be removed from my hometown. I when I joined the Marine Corps yep. 17 with two pending felonies and two misdemeanors, I needed to be removed from okay. where I was. Was that kind of your, that was your path? You were kind of yeah. leaving a oh. little bit of... Yeah, so I was like... some ruckus, bro. Yeah, I got, uh, I got two pending felonies for, you know, hitting somebody with a... I mean, assault with a deadly weapon, burglar one. Allegedly. Because I went into somebody... Allegedly. <laughs> It all got wiped because I joined the Marine Corps, old school. But yeah. my my uh, recruiter went with my uh, attorney to there, and they said, if you know, if Hancock gets out with honorable discharge, then we'll expunge all the charges. Oh, that's cool. It's like old school, like yeah, Vietnam that style. Old, and I was like, be, wow. It, yeah, it should be. Because I was just the uh, same as you. Uh, uh, I had a fuckload of energy, and I didn't know where to spend it at 17 yeah. years old, and I wanted to carve my own path. And it yeah, was yeah. just destructive, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I had the same thing when I got out, which we can kind of talk about your, what happened when you got out of the SEALs, yeah. because... What I find a lot of guys getting out, and I struggle with myself. I went to bro, I went to rodeo school after I got out because I was literally <laughs> I'm adrenaline rush. I'm yeah. looking like, well, I was like carrying a machine gun down the streets of yeah. Iraq. I was doing like yeah. cool shit in the Marine Corps. Like even if it was at the base, it wasn't special. I was still getting in fights and partying. Yeah. And it was hardcore yeah. life, you know, Marine Corps life, military life. And then you get out and you're like, okay, cool. Here's a job and do this thing every day. And I was like, fuck. So I needed like a hit of the adrenaline. Something. So I went, I was hanging out with a bunch of country guys from Oklahoma. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to sign up. And I went to like Sankey's Rodeo School for a weekend deal. And I started riding like these little bulls and started trying <laughs> shit out. Me and you. you guys I just graduate to the bigger <laughs> bulls. <laughs> I didn't go any further than that. I was like, thank God. That whole, that, that's not my realm. Dude, those guys are hard. They're bro. hard as nails, dude. Dude, that is a, hard that is a world nails. that I don't know how they. It's just as psychotic. Yeah. It is. It's a whole world. Man. It is, but um, I, what, I, what I'm getting at is I was looking for, I was looking for like that to expend that energy. I was looking for that, and it was destructive. You know, it was a and no positive place and, to put it. No positive place to put it. So what happened? Like when you got out of the seals, so you go through boom. You had six years in the teams or four years? Seven, seven years. Yeah, Holy shit. Because yeah. I got kicked out, man. Okay. Let's so I got through. kicked. I got kicked out of the seal teams for was smoking it was right where I wanted to be. I was crushing it, man. Early promotes. I'm a sniper. I'm a JTAC. I'm I'm hitting damn all these early golden boy. What's your rank at that point? So man, I made E6 in four years. Yeah, that's fast. So I was smoking, man. I was already up for my next like LPO position as a you know, I was moving. And then boom, I smash a guy in a bar on in Idaho. Just man. In a fight? Just one time, he said something off off color while I was and I just just no look hit him and one one right straight, 
changed the trajectory of my life. Really? One right straight, man. He broke his orbital eye, or I broke his orbital eye socket. So they gave me a GBH, aggravated assault, GBH. So I'm fighting that. They're giving me six plus three is my plea deal. Six years in prison plus three, bro. Were you on duty? Like, were you out there for the training? Team? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was oh, training, yeah. bro. So they sent representation up from the teams. It was in the, you know, it's all, deal. it's a whole thing. And I'm fighting it. I end up getting, so I'm expensive attorneys, flying back and forth, pulled out of the platoon, stressing. I'm on bail. The court approves me to go to Iraq on bail. I don't know how that slipped through the cracks, but it did. So next thing I know, I'm on a helicopter from Baghdad up south of Missoula. Just so happy to have that <laughs> yeah. on deck. Out of your mind. But that was a dark deployment for me because we we're up there linking up with the Sunni tribal fighters, guys that had been displaced by ISIS and building out FOB, prepping for a Missoula offensive, right? That's all I get into with that. That was 2015. Oh, yeah. So uh, right on the flat, really close, just building out this... I like that growing a beard and getting weird yeah, type, yeah, yeah. type deployment. Yeah, yeah. You know, just your no. Sh I don't think I put a shirt on for six That's months. You, know? you guys didn't do all the cool shit. Yeah, man, and that was that was cool. Hard, you know, because we're building a lot. Too. Yeah. You're like a construction worker with guns sometimes. Yeah, but the CBs out there. And not shit. super hot. It wasn't like I'm trying to try like super hot. Like, you know, there was trenched in. It was we didn't have a ton of freedom of movement. It was technically advise and assist, not a company. Technically, right, right, right. So. But we're out there working, and bro, I'm stressing, right? So I'm thinking, I got to come back to this felony case where I'm fighting for my career because I wasn't worried about the time. I was like, if I get a felony, it's a, I'm done, man. My, my whole out. career, I'm getting kicked when out. Did you plan on being a lifer? Dude, I was so happy at being a team guy. I, I wasn't picturing getting out. I wow. loved the lifestyle. I probably would have stayed in because I was thinking about maybe going to that next level. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in it. This was really hindering anything. So I couldn't even see past this. So I come back. We fight it. Finally, it gets bleeding into. I get him dropped down to two misdemeanors. I pay a ton of money. All this Jesus. stuff. You had to pay out of pocket yourself? Oh, bro. I, was paying t I, was, I had multiple attorneys in two states hemorrhaging cash for this. Oh, my God. So I signed, and I had to sign, give the guy full restitution to not get the felony. So I and you're signed not making my, millions. Of this. And, I, and I signed in my whole Iraq check, this guy, for the restitution yeah. and still had the civil case pending also. So it was just a lot of stuff. But I get a four-year formal probation, interstate transfer. So I'm actually in San Diego with paper handcuffs having to report and this and travel. It was very, I couldn't That's own a wild. gun. I couldn't own a weapon technically, but I'm an active duty Navy SEAL. It's very confusing. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Very confusing, but I was all right, okay. I get my top secret security clearance back. Things are looking good. Um, I'm not supposed to be drinking. I'm not supposed to be doing anything. And I was solid, bro, for like 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> 30 days. Yeah. And then I start going out with the girls again. Then I start kind of that ego starts lifting back up. Dude, three months later, I get another issue. Not a fight. Uh -huh. At a, con at a Jimmy Buffett concert, I, ju <laughs> I jump into a fucking golf cart that's not mine. That's the county's. Yeah. Just cruising around the parking lot. Cops roll up on me. I got no shirt, blasting tattoos. And they go, hey, man, what's up? And I just had this moment of like, I if they run my name, I'm fucked. Yeah. I, I grab my wallet and I start taking off. And I get tackled from both sides. I sh stood up. I shed them like dry leaves. Yeah. I, don't I was in straight flight mode. They sick the dog on me, so I I fight off this German Shepherd, which I still had a big ass chunk out of my ass from it. Hop over the fence, and mind you, there's like hundreds of people watching this go down. Oh my god! I hop over the fence. They hit me with a taser, like the, <laughs> the long, the long ones. No, no, I and I yank, yank the first one. Solid. They hit me with another one. Yeah, yeah. Hit. I end up going through three tasers, and then the fourth one took me down and then they give me all the love in the parking lot and I get and when I got put in the back of that car I was like I just hit the nail on the coffin yeah. hard what made you run did you have to run did you feel like you I just I felt like I had to get out of yeah, there yeah. yeah it was just I wasn't it was all instinct yeah so that was the nail in the coffin that got routed up it got assault on a police officer is what it got charged with so now I'm on a, another aggravated violent crime violation of probation I have federal marshals in a van trying to extradite me. I'm fighting this. I got three attorneys. I'm, I end up getting kicked out for steroids, ironically. They tested me for being the SEAL team? I passed this. I passed the, the big Navy Jag was pissed at me, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, fuck this guy. Second time, he beat, he's going to, I was already kind of beating the case again. 
they get it. I get it. I hooked up some contacts. I get it bumped down to a misdemeanor. Yeah. It gets brushed in. So now I'm like about to get out of the second one. Navy Jag goes, Hey man, we're testing him for, we read his police report. There's no way a human being could <laughs> pull out three tasers they came and, and fight a, and fight a dog off. Yeah, yeah. They're like, and I lit that motherfucker test up, bro. I lit that. Well, how do they, so look like a pessimist. Because everybody thinks you can't do testosterone or steroids. So what are they looking for? Dude, the they, high they testosterone sent, levels? They, they sent it to the No Shit Olympic Testing Center. Oh, they went hardcore. Dude, they paid like five yeah, grand yeah. for my test. Yeah, most people don't understand. Everybody that's like... I, no, I there's only the two places. There's only two yes. places they can test it. Yeah. So they... they and here, I had this moment, man. Because they said, hey, we're going to test you. Because I, I passed the drug test. That was never really my problem. Yeah. I passed the drug test and they go, hey, we're going to, you got to piss again for a steroid test. And I had a fake dick. And all this. <laughs> I, had, I, I had one. And here, I had this yeah. moment though. And you know what I said? I said, man, fuck that. Let's, 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 just, char let's just charge the machine gun test. Yeah. Whatever. I just had that moment of just surrender. Yeah. Let's just do this. And you were battling. I mean, you were, you were going to be fucking fighting all of this shit. I knew it was just coming. And I said, let's yeah. just get it. Sure enough, failed, pop. I fight it, ended up getting flushed out, in a, you know, months later. Damn. And so then I'm out, man. And that's that was my path. Seven years I was in, seven years and some change when I get kicked out. Got a general discharge. Wasn't yeah. like an OTH because the CO of Team 7 at the time was a man. Hooked me up with a bro move. And he gave me, well, could have been an OTH. And he had the ability to hit it with a general under honorable circumstances. So that's what you got out with. So yeah. So, dude, that was amazing look for him. I'm super grateful for that. General other than honorable. Gender, un general discharge under honorable circumstances. Oh, under honorable. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Dude, it was. Solid. Yeah. And so I was really grateful for that because, man, the truth was I didn't deserve shit. Like, right. I didn't deserve shit. I was just, I was not doing anything to take care of what I had earned. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I, and I wasn't doing no, any of the stuff to protect the stuff I had worked really hard for. Right. And then when that reality came, when that gavel came down, man, and I had lost my trident, get it pulled. Now I'm, I realized, I was like, man, dude, I really fucked that up <laughs> hard. So what's the plan now? <laughs> so then I get out and I go into that, that uh, private developer. So, I, so I, real estate was always fascinating to me. That's, yeah, why, yeah. that's why I'm psyched to get synced with you because I always keep my thumb on the pulse of it yeah it's fast dude like i i see it as just interesting it's super interesting and and it also a great vehicle for wealth development but just and it allows building and development exactly. building and development it's positive it is it is it's so you're turning either you're flipping you're taking shit and you're turning it into gold or you're turning it into nice things you're taking it's something progress it up. it's progress it's physical yeah. progress you can see that you can see and it real it's real real real, real, real estate, estate. Yeah. yeah and i and i really like that aspect of it it's not hocus pocus no no it's not like, yeah exactly it's not marketing and sales or something yeah it's it's yeah. real tangible goods that man I'm a simple man, bro. Mature. I'm a knuckle dragger, yeah, bro. Same here. Two knuckle draggers making it good in the big city. Bro. <laughs> That's right. We are. That's right. <laughs> but it's true, man. I, I need things that are clear and simple, man. I'm, I don't like to get in real estate. Not that it's simple. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I, I can understand. Oh, no, there's the framework. I understand and the framework. The once you understand it, 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 you know, it's just replicable. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just not. You, it's, it's, it is simple. I mean, you're right. You're right. Um, so after you, you're, you're getting out of the seals, you go to the, you crash and burn. Back on drugs, it yeah. sounds like, after the yeah. So that was two years to the day when I had gotten discharged from the United States. I had to go to jail again, mind you. I, forgot. I go to jail again, so then when I'm walking out of jail to serve the time on that other stuff, so I'm walking in Idaho. So I went to jail twice in Idaho. So then this is the last time I'm coming out of jail. Not for long stints, like a, you know, a month here, a month there, like just to kind of check the box. I get out, discharge papers, DD-214, go right in. Day one, Adderall, Xanax, like we said, all the wow. stuff. Right back to it. Stacked it all. Yeah. And I'm, I wouldn't say I'm an addict. I'm habitual. Yeah. It's a different, it's a, if something works one day, I'm going to do it every day. Of course. Right? That's just a, that's what do. So I got to make sure those habits are positive. That's my yeah. whole world now is right. those habits have got to be positive because if they're not, I will absolutely make them negative. Damn. There's just no other room. Right, <laughs> like right. All plus and minus. There's, yeah. no other, there's no other room. I'm not doing anything mediocre or in the middle no no 100 percent. and most successful people driven people whatever it is being a navy seal going even to the french foreign legion and uh you know setting your eye on a target and knowing that nothing will fucking deter you from that target you know that's this it can easily be switched over like you said there's a fucking fine line there's a gray area that can turn into negative that's a good point you brought up is 
driven people with that that double edged sword of that that self destructive tendency. Absolutely. It's you see it with artists, you see it with people with um, and it's it's high functioning individuals because you're operating at a very powerful frequency. So your 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 level's higher. Yeah. So your your need for stuff is higher. You're thinking about things on a more intense level. You need you need more inputs. Intense is a good word. Yeah, in, intense intense levels. You're not operating here on a flat plane. Right. When you're high your highs or lows. And learning how to control that and also just I don't think it ever stops. No learning it, how to control that. It it's a it's a it's like sweeping the floor of the you sweep it once, it's not you gotta sweep it again. You know, and those are those those are those daily disciplines which yeah. I it's apparent you 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 have I, I, I have, have to do them now. I, I have, have to do them now. I used to work out like the beginning, right? Just to just to get jacked, right? One for aesthetics. And don't get me wrong, I still love right. that factor of it. But for me now, it's like it puts me in a positive state to where I can come home to my two daughters and be optimistic for the day, set them up for school. I'm not that dad that's dragging ass getting out of bed, mm-hmm. banging his coffee around, hoping to get to the office on time, all fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And and so what it does is it allows me to create and get into that positive state by physical movement um, and have fun. I mean, I go to the gym like you and I, if we go work out in the morning, we fucking have fun. We're talking yeah. shit. We're doing our thing. Like I get that. I get a little bit of that grit again because I miss a little bit of that Man, being in this world. Necessary. It's not even. It's it's. Oh, as they say in French, obligatoire. It's it's, a, it's obligatory. <laughs> it's yeah. It's obligated. It's not even a. It's not even a, a, a maybe. Yeah. It's brushing your teeth. It's it's just what you do, and that is, and holding yourself to that standard, and always looking to where you can keep tightening it. Yep. And that's the whole game. It's Absolutely. like, because you're not just, you're in there trying to get better. Yeah, because it tightens yeah, it up. Yeah, it creeps in. I mean, anything, everything creeps in. All the, all the disastrous stuff, We're, the destructive habits. Yeah. Mentally. And it, slowly cutting them out, slowly cutting them out and focusing on that greater and those lesser things start falling. Yep. You know, they start falling off the back of the truck. That's, that's when things clicked for me. Me too. That's when things clicked for me when I started focusing a little bit more outside myself. But like we talked about before, you, we got it. You got to get good first before you can kind of even get to that point. You do. Where you're you looking out to first. Absolutely. You got to look down and in before you can look out. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I teach a lot of people about how to get into real estate. I coach them how to get started in that. But one of the things I see is that their whole life personally um, is disastrous. And I'm like, it doesn't matter about how much money and how far, how successful they become with the real estate. If they themselves are a sloppy father or a sloppy person and have all these destructive habits, like you can make a bunch of money, but you'll never find what you're looking for just because you make more money. If you're self-destructive and you have all these problems, like you're just going to piss all over a good marriage or you're going to shit all over having a good family and kids and continue to, to just deteriorate what is really, truly invaluable and important. You know, once that bridge gets crossed, and you feel how good it feels to live right, you can't go back. You can't it's unsee it. It's fucking impossible. It is. It's so, it's that friction we're talking about, but the other direction, yeah. in the good you know, in the good way, because you're on the good side of it. Yeah. You're trying to steer the river, but in the good, you're using good it for way. your positive now. <laughs> yeah. You can't go back. You can't go back to sleeping in it because you, you know what works. It's That's fucking, true. it's impossible. You're like, I, I can't, couldn't even if I wanted to. Right. It's gonna be too much pain so what made you join the french foreign legion so crash and burn and then next thing you know i lost everything two years to the day right then i'm suicidal in my truck nothing nothing i had nothing three days i'm like on the east side of the big island of hawaii i had oh, no moved shit. out there for like three months to kind of off the up and i'm like in the jungle going straight yeah, native live almost like i'm right. like i'm like going straight native dude <laughs> And, good experience. I mean, you're a Navy SEAL. So you got all the experience. And I was in Pahoa, Hawaii, if people know where that was, on the big island, on kind of the nose, on the east side. Love That, that place speaks to my soul, man. I love that. I, but I was really at a low point. You can be in paradise and be in hell. That, wow. That was real for me. I was sitting in paradise. I could see none of it. Nothing. And I had this moment where I realized that, man, I was being a fucking bitch. I just had this thing. I was thinking about my mom and my sister. And I'm like, bro, I'm just sitting here. <laughs> Everything's about me, right? What if I off my, like, what's their life going to look like? And that's when I decided I'm going to the French World Legion. Fuck this. Yeah. And eight days later, I was in France. No shit. Yeah. I you just showed up to the gates. That's all you can do, man. You just showed up to the That's gates. the only way you can join. No shit. Walk that, me through that. So most yes. people don't join the Foreign Legion. So what's the so process? It's a 200 some year old institution about... 
that was started by an old king to funnel guys he had from a foreigners from a previous war who were who were war, that warrior gene causing trouble in the streets, bored, right? To get him back onto the battlefield, get him back into a unit, and the carrot was they'd give him French citizenship if they passed their five years. Kind of like the legions of the Roman Empire, if people are familiar. They served their 17, legions and different, the same concept. So the process to join is, man, there's no... There's no paperwork you sign in. There's nothing, man. You don't call ahead. You don't set you an appointment. Bop, bop. You show up with a bag and your passport and knock on the door. And a dude with a gun and a green beret of Legionnaire will open it up. 24, day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You can go there on Christmas morning and they'll open the damn door. Wow. Yeah, so it's that's the whole thing. They've been doing that forever. And you you, you can recreate yourself. That's something I asked you in, in, in on Instagram because that's always what I knew too. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's a very similar path. You can literally go, like you said, get an ID and recreate yourself. They give you a fake name getting in. That's a, that was a mandatory. They might have changed that now, but at the time and forever, you show up, it's a mandatory you're losing your name. They're taking your passport. You're not seeing that thing again until you get your old name, your real name back and pass some more paperwork or never. <laughs> you know? Wow. So you're not leaving France so until you get, you know, you have no passport, man. Yeah. So... They give you a fake name, you, uh, IQ test, medical processing. It takes about a month to get in through this pre-selection part. They can kick people out. Like, you suck, bro. They, kick, suck. they only take one out of 15. Oh, wow. So one out of 15 actually get pre-selected. Wow. So we come to the door, and that's, it's everything. You got a weird-shaped head. You got a weird, weird-shaped legs. Or, <laughs> yeah, no. every, teeth are a big one, too. Yeah. Teeth for guys. Because you got, imagine, guys are coming from every corner of the yeah, earth. All man. over the world. And... A lot of these guys don't, Americans, we don't have that, that issue, but every 150 nationalities are represented in the French Foreign Legion. Wow. Fascinating. And you have French is mandatory. So you start getting in there, they'll start working through interview processing is very difficult. They wanted to know for me, cause I brought my DD-214. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck's a Navy SEAL doing here? Like, yeah. Why are you what, here? Yeah. What's why the real reason? That's exactly the question they asked me. Why are you here? What's the real reason? They don't want issues with the United States government. They don't Correct. want some guy with war. They don't know what's going yeah. on. So they really just want to dig into, are you who you say you are? That's because the, the, the known guy is better than the unknown. You know, they don't yeah, want viability. Viability. They don't want sexual crimes. They don't want problems with Interpol, arms trafficking, right. things like that. So they really dig in and they do their, they, they pulled up stuff that I was like, I had no idea where they found. But it wasn't bad stuff. Just, you know, you worked for this company and the, like, things oh, like shit. that. I was like, whoa, well, I didn't even remember that. But so they do their due diligence and it's a process. You're waiting around a lot. Military, it's yeah, hurt. It's a lot right of that. Right. It's not militant at first. And then it starts, you start indoctrinating you in and then you get selected and then you go to boot camp and it's a basic army infantry boot camp. Yeah. To kind of this, they, they say the legions a lot like the Marine Corps of the 1980s. Like now, oh, if, nice. if you get, it's very disciplined. You know, if you walk across the grass wrong, you're going to be Fuck put in a little legion. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's strict presentation long every time you enter into a room. Cool. So it's, I understand why. Cause you got guys from all over the world, checker backgrounds coming in. They got to put them into a cohesive fighting unit yep. and they're all speaking different languages. God damn. So it creates some, you have, you've got to just rein them in. So I understand, but it made it challenging as fuck coming from the SEAL teams, then doing whatever I wanted in the yeah, civilian world. up in the SEAL teams too. Yeah, and then then doing whatever I wanted in the civilian world for years to just kind of get it. Show. But the only people that actually make it successful, because a lot desert too, a lot, lot just don't even make it through their contract because it's the lifestyle is brutal. You have to have a very clear vision of why you're doing it. Wow. Right? If, you're there, if you're there, it was... It was just my, my, if you're trying to be Rambo, you're going to be disappointed like any military, yeah. right? You're going to be, those guys psychologically get, you know, pretty smashed pretty yeah. fast. If you're doing some romantic notion because you're long lost love from, you're going to get crushed smoke too. Cause you, the reality of the situation, you got, got all the leaderships from Eastern Bloc countries, Damn. you know? So every, I learned French in a Russian accent. Really? Yeah. Dude. <laughs> so, so you speak French in a Russian accent now? Yeah, and I kind of exaggerate, but not really. Anybody who knows been in the French one, it's Ukraine, Belarusia, but everybody's Eastern Bloc. Yeah, a lot of guys are. Yeah, yeah. You know the country, so they bring that guys who have had serious hardship growing up. Yeah. That culture 
comes it just there yeah that's what makes it difficult is the leadership that's there because the guys that stay are not going back to their countries for a reason yeah because it's way hard yeah you know so that's why guys from the west have a hard time because that culture is different but mine was i'm coming in to finish my tattoos because i had a vision of my body also yeah yeah i wanted to get fully blasted neck to my toes yep everything's blasted i don't have any part of me that's not blast your ass cheeks everything <laughs> I oh, that. my fucking my, my, ass, my ass cheeks are blasted i'm fucking not <laughs> i'm gonna have to do it do it man I have to do it do it man and uh that so that was i knew they wouldn't fuck with me on that yeah because you got guys coming in with face tats blasted full head and they let them in yeah bro whoa that's what's nice. cool that's cool that's cool you got guys coming in with heads bla head blasted and stuff that's badass you yeah. know so i really appreciate that about it's it's the last bastion of anti wokeness. No shit. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you know, on by a I say, man, if you, if some of these guys, if you said something about proper pronouns, they don't know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Thank God. They don't know what you're talking about, man. So there's that. That's kind of refreshing. And they, you know, they just let the every joke. It, it's nobody cares about anything. Love it. There's no sexual harassment briefs. No, you know, none no. of that exists. That's awesome. That makes it cool. But the lifestyle is hard, and I had a real clear vision that I needed to use the French Foreign Legion as a vehicle of self-development. Yeah. I knew I needed time to burn. Right. And I even said this to my mom. I was sipping on a bottle of vodka. I needed to get all the drugs out of my system. My food of France took three or four, four days to kind of get the Adderall out, the weed out, because I knew they were drug testing me. So yeah. I was just kind of like letting everything bleed out, sipping on a bottle. Of, and I had no money at the time. <laughs> I flew here on like my last dime, so I'm staying in a hostel. Just sitting in the street, like sipping on a like on some homeless guy, pretty much just sipping on a bottle of vodka, going, "Okay, I'm going in." I talk to my mom. She said, "You don't have to do this." I said, "I do." I, I there was like not I have to. It wasn't like something I had to do it. You felt called. I I wasn't. I was. It was. I knew it was mandatory for my life, for me to have any type of self worth. I was like, I gotta keep writing this interesting story. This is gonna suck. Going back to boot camp, back to basics, literally. Yeah. Back to basic. Yeah, you literally did. So, and I knew it was going to be a lot of cleaning, you know, all the bullshit. So that lack of ignorance made it hard to go. But I knew I needed time, man, to mature. I, I, I knew I was still in it. I hadn't learned yet how to live right. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know what that looks like for me. Right. But I need to have some time to figure that out. And... Be kind of doing something interesting that's difficult at the time because yeah. I need that, right? So, and maybe they'll give me a gun and I could deploy again too, which I got to, which was Sweet. cool. And learned French and I knew I wanted to go. I was like, well, I might be going that mercenary world after. So learning French is very, very helpful in Africa if you're contracting, doing for gold mining, uranium, right. cobalt. The majority of the country speaks the French, right? When 20, they 26 them. countries in Africa speak French. That makes sense. Not a coincidence. No. So... I knew it was positive because not a lot of operators speak English and French. So that was kind of my angle, my game plan was tattoos, finish this, kind you of were recreating yourself. You wanted to create yeah. this version of yourself you always admired. wanted to be that be. bad. I, I was like, we gotta, yeah. I gotta reset hard. Bro, so that, that was that was that was my psychology. Did going you get in. blasted out there? Most yeah. of your tattoos are from yeah. where? I mean, in France. I, yeah. So in Marseille, man, I had some of my legs. The arms, don't let, but I really filled it in heavy, like yeah. went, went full in to France. And I, I used the tattoos as my like touch point. My, I didn't go out. I didn't party. I every weekend. I that was what I was doing. Getting the, tattooed every weekend for years. It took me. It takes forever for anybody that doesn't years. know. It takes forever to get it tattooed. It is. It was no. I had no idea how much ink my leg was, bro. Like when my we legs lay, are. When you lay it out, yeah. bro, because you got some legs. It's a, it's a back. It takes forever. It's a back, dude. Yeah. Like when I when they laid it out like that, it was like that. I was Jeez. like, that's some. That's a back. Yeah. The quads and stuff, and that's just a lot of space in the circumference. So I was like, it, and you know, and there's, yeah. it was great because it gave me something to focus on in that project and kept me out of the bullshit that was i'm sure the other guys go out the legionnaires are a very diverse group yeah so you do i thought going in there'd be a lot of these eastern Bloc guys that would just be turning and burning yeah but it must be this kind of new age where they had really alcoholic fathers and stuff and and a lot of them went straight edge 
Really? There's like a lot of legionnaires who are like from Ukraine and Belarusia yeah. that don't drink. It's pretty common that if you come from an alcoholic style family, like hard abuse, yeah. like those people were stay sober. But <laughs> you still got those <laughs> yeah. yeah. You go out to the bars and there's problems. And in France, South France, a lot of times bars won't even take legionnaires in. You know, really? Yeah. They're worried about the rowdy fights. And Pro- yeah. Rowdiness. So there's M. Marseille, where in South France, where a lot of this all takes place. It's a dangerous city. A lot of stuff goes down. But yes, drinking culture in the Legion is yeah. very strong. The French in general. Oh, yeah. It's a common you know, in Europe. In, in the United States, you know, on deployment, you know, we're not. That's. It's, it's a no-go In Terre D, right? Yeah. The, the French unload the wine next to the water. Really? Bro, it comes off the helicopter first. Holy shit. So old school. But old school, but they're reasonable with it, right? The yeah. French officers and stuff, they're reasonable. But they're drinking beers. They're, they're it's de- it's very Way integrated. It's there it's very integrated into the every company has a bar in the in the building. Yeah. Every single one. They're reasonable though, wasn't it? crazy i had a, i was trying to stay away from that i just wasn't interesting to me i was trying to just get better and i had no reason to be sitting around drinking with a bunch of dudes yeah yeah that didn't interest me at true, all true that's kind of what i was i was like man i had been there and popped all the bottles and done all the yeah, stuff i've done it all yeah it was i was trying that. to get better man and i knew just sipping on beer is not where it's getting me right so i kind of went that other way and i'm just i was like just getting blasted and staying just trying to work out on the weekends and and that's kind of where that momentum started picking up. Then I started seeing some progress. I deployed to, immediately when I got to my regiment, I deployed to South America and French Guiana. A lot of people don't know this. France has territory in South America, just north of Brazil, called Guiana Francais, French Guiana. And it is all gold down there. It is wild west. We were hitting, we were doing interdiction for gold mines. We'd bring demo and do 11, 12 day, 14 day patrols in the jungle, hit gold mines every day. What are you looking for? Brazilians who are illegally gold mining and they're crushing the Amazon rainforest, but it's also to do protection for the legal gold mining. Yeah. And then interdiction of drugs and also all that. But dude, man, that is a wild place down there. That's insane. That's awesome. Yeah. So we were living in an outpost deep. I'm talking a bus to a small base to Eight hours on a small boat up a river to another. We in a really shitty we, combat outpost. We were in on the Suriname and French Guiana border on the river, like living it out out there, which I was fine with because you're away from the flagpole. Yeah. A lot of guys do deploy and stuff. They know you want to be out out there because it's yeah. you're working. It's 24 hour security, so you're you know you're tired. You get up at three. You're doing watches and all that stuff. With in addition to patrols and building out this little, but. It was not bad. I, I enjoyed the jungle. That was a cool, a cool experience. You talked a little bit a minute ago about the brotherhood. You said a lot of people yeah. don't know if the brotherhood so, exists the same as it does in the it, team. That's a good point. Bringing it back is people want to know, hey, it's the brotherhood. And I get I get contacted about this stuff a lot. Like prior Marines are like, I want to go to Legion. Yeah, it's a good I question. would say, and I do like consultation calls and stuff with them because I want to give them the real information, right? Not everybody I would say, but I'm saying if you want to look for brotherhood and stuff, the Legion's difficult because it's so many different nationalities. So there's got the mafias that click up, you know, and I don't mean this in a bad way. I mean it like language is powerful. Absolutely. It's, it's really challenging to express yourself yeah. in a different language. A completely different and culture. So, so the Americans, we all click up with the South Africans and the English and stuff. It's normal. And you, the, the Russian speakers click up with each other. So they have their own things, but everyone's kind of on their own program. Everybody's so very, and they spread, they want to, you're living with each other all the time, around each other all the time. It's very strict in the yeah. form legion with freedom of movement. You're checking in out of the gate. You're checking out of the company. You're walking in lines. You're is this that is, the, is it that way for five years? Five years, man. Now you're not even allowed to leave base in any civilian clothes. Now they've you have to leave in legionnaire. Yeah, yeah man, it is strict, bro. So you when you go out, dress high, uniform. Just, wow, dress uniform, bro. No civilian clothes at all. You're not supposed. To, you can change out. Like yeah. you're not, you don't have to stay in it all the time, but, but you can't exit the gate. Yeah, you can't exit the gate. Dress uniform, and wow. that changes versus uh, the, the terrorist problem. Sometimes they they yeah, you wouldn't want to go. It, it's really dumb when you think about it. it Horribly just draws bad attention. Yeah. So that's why you, it's whatever general has a stick up his ass. Gotcha. That's gets that makes sense. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. And that's 
really the reality of how the Legion is in terms of the, the brotherhood side of it. Because yeah. guys have to, you, you, you'll you get some friends, but you kind of want to be doing your own thing. For sure. You know, it's it's different than being in the Marines or SEAL teams and stuff where you, you'll go and meet up and party on the weekend. True. Guys are like, because you're also living kind of a quasi-normal life. And while you're in the Legion? No, or in the in the, in the, in the oh yeah, you are living a quasi you It's here. quasi normal. You're in the familiar culture for sure, and so you're there it's like yeah, there it's a little bit different. Guys just kind of want to, and then they all find their hotels. You find your good program. It's guys who get on that good healthy program mm -hmm. or yeah, don't. destructive. One. You see, you see them come back on Monday. Yeah, you know because yeah. it, it's very apparent who's doing the healthy stuff and who's not. Yeah. And that was huge, man. Is getting on that healthy program quick, fighting that. How many Place legionnaires you can stay? are there? It's about 8,000. 7,500. 8, okay. Wow. That's not very many, right? Yeah. So they're different platoons, different regiments? They got them by regiments. Okay. Yeah, they got them by regiments, and everyone, every regiment has their own specialty. You got the infantry. And the, the, the like French, MOS, their military. The French specialty. Foreign Legion is a one stop package deal for France. Gotcha. They outsource nothing. That is like, nothing. So they outsource nothing. Their own security, own medical, own administrative own band, own cavalry, yeah. own... Very, very similar to the Marine Corps itself. It's, it's, the structure yeah. of the French Foreign Legion is very similar to the Marine Corps. Yeah, self-operating. You have, you have, you have self -operating. Air, air wing, you have everything self-sustaining. That's yeah, exactly... The only thing we subsidize is corpsmen from the Navy. Yeah. And that's, again, that's yeah. very similar. They'll take on some officer, doctors, but that's about it. Gotcha. Roger that. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's cool. And so what MOS, what job skill did you walk in with? So I walked in... So when I'm getting checked into the French Foreign Legion, they're checking out my DD-214. Yeah. I knew I wanted to go. There's two commando groups. Okay. There's Group Command GCP, Group Commando Parachutiste, which is Parachute Commando Group, and GCM, Group Commando Montan, Mountain Commando Group. I was directed by some Legion leadership in the selection process to GCM. So they go, they're deployed a lot. They, they, they're commandos with the French military, not even the Legion. They're Dope. a little bit separated. So that's the direction I went. It's at a, it's at an engineering regiment technically, but it's part of the Mountain Infantry Brigade of France. So gotcha. Mountain Infantry is my specialty. So out in the mountains, even though I fucking hate working in the mountains, I'm not built for that, man. <laughs> I'm not that Billy. Too much muscle, dude. Bro, I, I pay the man, yeah, I dude. I bet you do. I here's how hard the the mountain training is in the French Foreign Legion. I failed my first one, bro. Oh, Navy shit. SEAL coming, failed, bro. And I was like, damn. That's the real deal. It was hard. It was a run, full pack, a run. Four hours <laughs> up a mountain and down. Wow. And running down, bro. I'm like, dude, I ain't running down. Wow. Man. Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> might. No way, bro. This Falling is, down. Dude, yeah, I just, that was not happening for me. And I, I failed the time just straight up. You know, you're shift changing the crampons and the whole deal. But I failed the time. But pass, you know, pass and stuff. And. So technically my job in the Legion, because I'm technically still active duty. Right. So is team lead, chef to keep, which is like fire team leader. Yeah. Now do you move up in rank the very same yeah, way so the other military structure? It's very similar, similar to the Marines. You burn some time, you get that kind of quick specialist kind of yep. rank, and then you have got to pass more O course, obstacle courses and times, and you got to pass this whole other training, which to get to like corporal. Yeah. What's the pay like? Like the pay terribly affected? Yeah. By no, the rank? No, it, no, the pay in the legion's bad. Oh, I assume. No, nah, it's bad. On deployments, it's not bad. It's actually combat deployment stuff. It's fairly comparable to even what I was making as a team guy. Wow. Deployed, I was like, damn. But when you're back in garrison, yeah, they, woo, bro. <laughs> they, you got three hats in a cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's tight, man. And but they know there's for some guys coming from other countries, it's no I, choice. It's probably amazing. Well, they're crushing it. The special we had a guy who's a ca uh, captain. Officer in Belarusia, special force. Max that he was making there was eight hundred a month, eight hundred. So he's just going to the French Foreign wow. Legion doing basic infantry. He's like tripling his pay oh, every dude. month. So yeah. and you got guys from Brazil and stuff. So they're actually if the if they go back there with their legion, they're actually doing okay. Right. It's but guys from the United States and stuff. It's just not. It doesn't translate. No, hell no. Yeah. So and that's that's also I, I knew I wasn't staying in a career and, and no, I, that's not why you get in anyway. Yeah, and like that's just a general question. And, no, wait, absolutely. And the pay as you get rank isn't great until you get to that upper upper echelon. And the upper upper echelon, it's not terrible. Is that where you graduated now? 
uh, to uh, like the upper echelon. No, I'm not there. Yet. So I could go non commissioned officer. They okay. presented me with a, but I said no. NCO pack. Yeah, because I got a duty. Got a it's five year minimum. So you got to reenlist for another five, five years. Yeah. So and dude. I'm ready to move into that. And you're not too far out, and so you're gonna get out soon, dude. I'm out in like a month. Awesome, congratulations. Yeah, that's awesome. Bro. Yeah, I'm ready, bro. Let's talk more about like what you're gonna do and and what you're doing now. Like, what's your plans now that you're getting out? You've done yeah, so a bunch of stuff. I was I hit this point just even a couple months ago, and I just was like, it's time, bro. Yeah, time to hit that record button. Nice. And so that's what I did, and I put my phone down against a fucking water bottle in my Byrex room, dude, and just sent it, dude. One take, no edits, all my videos, and dude, we got 1.5 million views in seven weeks, man. On Damn, my long form. On your YouTube? Yeah, long form, 1.5 million views, seven weeks. Second video, I, everyone's like, oh, your first video is gonna, mine didn't, I had 50,000 views in like handful of days. My second one has 350,000 and you know, whatever. Yeah. Hell yeah. All I'm talking about is what that starting at the bottom's like what mindset, what, how to not fuck yourself, right? How to consistently improve, how to take self-ownership. Yeah. That's my message. So that's where I'm going with this. Let me ask you this. All the stuff you've done, obviously Navy SEAL, hard motherfucker doing all this shit, right? Like we're tough guys, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like let's just, it, how strange was it still for you to get behind the camera? Was it strange or was it not? Well, it started, it were started self-critical. It started like this. I knew I had to get better and comfortable in speaking on camera. So what I did, I was actually, I had a, I tore my calf muscle. So they sent me, I had to go to the hospital for like six weeks. And I just, I said, it's time to practice. So I put my practice. phone down. I yep. put my phone down and every day I would speak for three to seven minutes. No break. And watch yourself. Yeah. And watch myself after. I was like, oh, that looks weird. Because we're our own worst critic most of the time. Well, I'm like, that looks weird. Why am I doing 100%. that with my face? And I read this thing that said, if you do something 85 times or 80 something times, then like that 87th is good. So that's what I did. I was like, okay, for 80 something days, I'm going to do this. And I stopped doing it after the gym when my vibration was high. Cause then I got out of the hospital. Exactly. So I'm like, okay, I would talk and just about whatever was coming stream of consciousness. Did it, did it sure enough. And so on the 87th video, I put the phone down for real and then sent it. Hell and on. I've never pressed stop. Not once on my camera, awesome. never have retaken a video, never have edited Not a video. Then. Nothing. So every ever since that first video, all my videos are one take first time. Dope. Awesome. And the message you're sending out to people, you just want to tell your story. And then now you're helping people out with, with coaching, right? Dude, we're stacking coaching? clients. We're stacking clients because it's people lost their fucking mojo. That's the client that I want. Is I get guys prior SF, Mill from Australia, New Zealand, UK, all over, United States. Even French, that they're feeling lost and they're middle aged or even a bit younger, guys who are older, they just know they could be better. Man, if you think you could be better, you can. 100%. You can. And not only you can, you fucking should. You have to. Or you're going to fucking just be it sucked the life out of you. You're ignoring the subconscious call. It's an energy suck to massive, massive amounts. You can't function. I can't. Thinking back, I don't know how I did it. I just wasn't self-aware enough. But once that voice became clear, and I know you know what I'm talking about, Austin, it's like once you hear it, <laughs> you can't unhear it. Unhear it. It's it's too painful to go back in that bridge. And it and so I preach very simple stuff, but very early wake up. I think I drowned out that voice for a long time with drinking. Oh, you, it's what we do. You know what I'm saying? We drown it oh, up because wow. we're like, oh, it's just what's going down. Yeah. It's not, it's it, everybody else is, where it is, it just is what it is. Yeah. Surrender and listen to it, man. Life gets, well, like, gets tapped into that higher clear. energy. Yeah, at that point. And you start seeing levels of success, Shit, you know? Yeah. And that's why I can tell from your energy and is, man, being content is, it, peaceful is fucking cool, man. It is cool. It's, yeah. it's the only way I want to live right. is to feel clear and, and happy, man. I, that word happy kind of has like a, very, hey, man, but happy yeah. man yeah it's it to be fucking waking up and being in a good fucking mood and feeling good about what you're doing everybody deserves that who wants it a hundred percent and but they have to clarify what that means yes absolutely and that's that that's that learning and i think uh i think going back to what you said and how you help people though is like 
you know, and what I said earlier about real estate and coaching and stuff like this, people think that it's a money thing yeah. or it's uh, a, some kind of materialistic thing. Uh, or even the people that talk shit on materialistic yeah. shit. You know, I like cool shit. I like awesome yeah. stuff. But I also think it's super important that, uh, you know, that we live these experiences. Um, and it just, man, it's, uh, having that conscience and that clarity is has changed my life. Experiences with your family? Yeah, yeah. And experiences like, with life. family and experience. It, this is an experience. What we're yeah. doing right here is an experience. And having those are so much more important. We couldn't have this conversation if both of us were not clear. Yeah. We would not, first, we just wouldn't, or it, we wouldn't, we'd be in it. If you, if you can't see the forest for the trees, if you're still living that way, you can't project out and really start planting. You, you can't, you won't have these experiences. You're right. not going on those vacations. You're not having these conversations right. about larger, deeper principles because you're still trying to fucking get through the day. <laughs> yeah. Man, fuck that, dude. That's not living. That's that. I'm trying to thrive, man. Exactly. I'm trying to thrive in this fucking world and just getting by, man. And not, that's a lot of the freedom what we talked about, man, being able to buy cool shit, man. It's because you fucking want it, man. It's because you want it. It's, exactly. it's because you want it. Do you Bingo. fucking... Man, we don't need clothes. I don't need to cut my fucking hair or I don't need to... do. you don't have to cut your hair, bro. But, you know, we don't <laughs> have to, you don't have to get tattoos. No, but it's the no, choice. No, but, but man, I fucking to. want to, man. And that's striving. This beautiful world. And that makes you reality. happy. It makes you happy. 100%, you said, You know dude. what I'm saying? Being genuinely you and doing the things and achieving the things that you want to that you want to achieve is what makes you happy. What makes me happy? Man, freedom is freedom of choice. Exactly. I want freedom of choice. If I want to buy something or I don't, I don't want to not be able to, or if I want to go somewhere with my family, I want to be able to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's the ultimate superpower. That's my love. That's in the, I like how you said that. You got to define clearly what what happiness is for you and that's part of what i do with clients is is make them write down what their 10.0 man is yep how does he think how does he move who is he what does he look like and then habitually construct that man love you it. know and that's it and you're i i start with the absolute easiest thing the body yep it's it's the one thing well, it's where you started it's it, you have to it's where i started it's you can control what goes in your fucking mouth. It doesn't cost you anymore. And you, it, it it does not. People what, will argue that it will, and it does not. It costs you less. Costs you less. What does it cost you to not? Exactly. Your whole fucking life. You're exactly right. So the messages I get when dudes start really dropping weight and really start getting a hold, I go, yeah, man, tracking your macros is fucking powerful. Yep. It's simple and it's powerful. It removes that subconscious guilt. It gets you clear. You're getting progress. You know What's going on? It's control. Yep. It's control, man. And then you can start deliberately fo taking all that extra bandwidth and focusing on the things that you can't predict. Right. Right. And so it's control of what you can. So you can focus on the things you can or, or project it out. That's the whole system. And it's, it's not perfect at first. No. For, for but everybody. You, but it's those incremental steps. It's similar to putting yourself on camera. It's similar to picking up the weights the first time. It's similar to making that one business decision or, or buying into that program and, and educating yourself or, you know, buying that first deal when it comes to real estate and things like that. It's all incremental steps. Like, mm -hmm. you don't just get it just like that. But the people that give up when you hit those little roadblocks will never achieve it. You know what I mean? You said a good too with the buy, buying of the product, investing in yourself. You hear that, invest. Man, it takes, you have got to take that leap of faith somewhere. I had to reach out to somebody for some help because I was hitting this plateau. I was doing keto and all this stuff. And I, man, I felt like dog shit, man. Yeah. I couldn't even make it up the stairs. I was trying, I was eating the calories. I, was just, I didn't know, I realized, bro, I'm not asking anybody for help because I'm like, oh, I'm a Navy SEAL yeah, legionnaire. Yeah. I, I don't, nobody could tell me how to train, bro. I look okay, but I'm like, man, I can look better, man. Yeah. So then drop the ego, reach out to somebody for help get some new information, get an influx of accountability and start making some fucking progress, exactly. man. And it's never gonna meet your fucking pocketbook's favorite. Bro, it's gonna pay, be painful. It's always painful. It has it's to never be. not been painful. It has to be painful. Yeah. For you to have some skin in the game to fucking feel like you need to get moving. Absolutely. You have got to, man. Man, I invested in this program, bro. And I was making, I, I spent pretty much half my net worth on like, well, for a whole year on this shit on, to, to learn some shit. I was like, fuck, man. Best decision I ever made. There you That's go. the fucking exactly. decision. Best decision I ever made. Got the information I needed and I was off and running. Bro. That's all you need is the information and the implementation. Sack up, man. Exactly. Sack up. And do it. Fucking put your money where your mouth is. 
if you don't believe in yourself, that's a whole different fucking story. So that's a, that's a, that's, that, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a conversation you have to have with yourself. Yeah. Most of the time when I talk to people that end up saying that they're not ready to jump into a program like that or something, I've realized that it's their lack of confidence in themselves. What, what, what is your answer to that? I'd say I, it's, it's them. It's literally, I know it's their lack of, I say, I asked them the question. I was like, is there something I'm telling you that you don't think that you can achieve? Mm. And a lot of times that, uh, that's a good, that's they, a good the, the question. truth is that it's not that they think I can achieve it because they've seen it, whether yeah. it's on social or even in person, but they don't think they can achieve it. Hmm. And whatever it may be, even like, go, let's go back to like when you were just the gym guys, right? Yeah. Just working out. Like, yeah, yeah, well, you can be big, but I'm not X. Say yeah. what it is. Well, I don't have this. Or, oh, well, I got a wedding coming up and we're going to drink. And yeah. it's boom, it's boom. And there's always something. Think about it every time. Well, I was going to not drink too, but... You know, this is my my anniversary weekend. You know, this is my whatever. And so it's every excuse. The same fucking excuse is the same excuse for everything else. You know what I'm saying? But is a terrible fucking word. Yeah. I was but. Yep. Man, but what, bro? But nothing. (laughs) But nothing. Yeah. But nothing. That self-doubt is only eradicated through that self-work. Absolutely. It's only eradicated by... You said something on on one of your when I was going through your content kind of to learn a little yeah, bit yeah. more about you, I was like, man, you said something about like, dude, once I'm doing what I s- proved that I s- will do what I say I'm going to do. It's that it is. It is absolutely that you said it. Well, you know, you said you're going to do it and you do it. Yeah. We've all lied to ourselves. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Being honest, you go, okay, I call it, but it's not doing anything for that self-worth. Or you're like, Bro, you can't even listen to yourself. Exactly. Bro. I say I'm going to eat this and then, ah, well, we'll go for pizza. Bro. You know, and I'm going to get off drugs. I'm going to stop drinking. And then out here in the world, expecting people to listen to you. <laughs> Straight and up. Some of those people have the biggest mouths. Always do. Always do because they're fucking delusional. They are delusional. Or just a fucking asshole, you know? <laughs> it's True. one of the two. Yeah. It's expecting respect and not respecting yourself exactly expecting anything when you can just look at somebody and go man you don't re- fucking respect yourself exactly man. and what you're saying doesn't make any sense with what and that's where the right. self-doubt comes in and i understand self-doubt i've had self-doubt i don't think it ever goes away i'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest probably need I don't it think, i think you need it i think it's a reflection of maybe weak points you have in your in your system mm-hmm. you know and that's okay but it can be destructive. What, you know what, what part? What what things in self doubt do you deal with in the on the business, business side? Right, like you like can what? make a business decision wrong. You can make uh, market can shift and things can happen, mm-hmm. and you feel like uh, you're you're not you didn't do the right thing or you didn't plan. Um, but there's so many variables in business. I mean, it's similar to the battlefield when you talk about like just any military experience. There's a lot of variables you can't control. You can try to mitigate as much as possible, but you're only leading from the experiences you've had. Yeah. And you can't have all the experiences and then be ready. You have to have the experience to learn how not to have it. Does yeah. that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like you can't learn that this was a bad deal until you know you figured out that maybe this was a bad deal. Hiring a coach can prevent a lot of that and a mentor yeah. a lot of that. But eventually you're going to get bigger and you're going to do more deals or you're going to do more things and uh, you're going to make a mistake or the market will shift, you know, or it, there'll be some correction or deal gone bad or a situation or a partnership that doesn't work out anymore or something like that. But it's not a negative thing. It's just what you needed to learn those lessons. I was going to ask mean? you about as you start building the company and you start stacking on that responsibility of other people's lives. Yes. I was going to ask you, that must be. Uh, the big one of the bigger fears is, is because now your decisions are affecting people's lives and their families and they are all that i can imagine that that is a major fucking source of stress it is so it's, it is and it isn't um so what i realized i it took me a this took me experience to figure out at first in your mind you know i wanted to create a big business and a big business and be successful and that's what it was all about that's it that's it there was no thinking further than that and what i thought that was was more employees more people more trucks more things at that time i had a service company i still have um and you were going to scale it and do more you know more custom homes when i was building um and more people but the reality was like that didn't fit what I really wanted. You know what I'm saying? Like I, you can have a very tight, small group and do big numbers in mm-hmm. operations when it comes to real estate. You know, you yeah, don't you have to have a thousand employees. You know, some businesses require that. Yeah. But you have to be willing to be that person that wants to build that kind of business. Yeah, and it goes back like you said. What do you want? Exactly, because I've been down the road of building a business that wasn't what I wanted. You wake up at the end of the day, and you're like, Why am I doing what I'm doing? And a lot of us fall in this trap 
of doing it because it's all we knew. So I went into construction. Why? Because I grew up in construction. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all I knew. A lot of people in Oklahoma go and get in oil and gas because that was it's popular in oil and gas. Texas, same way. So you go get a degree, you become somebody that works for a big company, then you start climbing the ladder or you start your own company. But you have to look and say, is that really giving me the life or the things that I want to do? Mm -hmm. You know? And and when you start deductive reasoning and looking back on like you said, what did you say? You said mobility, yeah. freedom of mobility, of movement. Yeah. The, you don't think that when you start a business. Yeah. You yeah. don't. And so when you get locked into what you said, Locked brick out. and mortar. 20 employees, yeah. this and that, yeah. assets. Now you've got to do that because you do have those employees. Yeah. Now, what do you, how do you unravel that? Yeah, you, That's the bind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would be, that would, I imagine that being the most, most difficult thing is that management of, of responsibility of people's fucking families. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, you know, as technically you've been in the same position with people's lives. If you look at the Navy SEALs, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's. It strikes, the one thing about the civilian world that just strikes me, even from the outside, because I, I don't have the experience in it, is your, everybody kind of knows what the rules of the game are on the seal, on the, on the in war in general. Yeah, it yeah. just, everybody kind of knows what we sign up and that's always a possibility, you know, but like the soccer mom doesn't really, you know, isn't really prepared for losing everything. And like, it's, True. it's that's, that part feels like it would be scarier. It is. To it, manage it, it, that part. It's true that, and even your own family betting on yourself. Right? Yeah, like most people have that fear of jumping from a salary and getting into a an entrepreneurial state, or even quitting their job to bet on themselves, mm -hmm. because now they don't have that steady income. They don't have that Shit. security. You, that um, that piece for me had kept me from the family. Well, I had never been married, no kids, and now I'm starting to get to the point. You know, like getting into the coaching stuff. Now I'm starting to see some numbers come in. Not, yeah, nothing, not breaking the bank, but I was like, okay, I think I can make this work. It's like I found myself going, man, but what if it like crashes and I take this responsibility? Self doubt. It's yeah, different. I, I, it doesn't I, go away. Yeah, I, I, I even kind of was dealing with it even this morning. I was thinking of like, man, okay, and projecting into the future and, you know, plan, making plans and going, okay, well, but what if I don't want to, like, what if I fail? You know, because I'd yeah. seen that in my life, you know, because my parents went through a bankruptcy and then we dealt with some exactly. financial troubles and I was like, Man, I don't want to put a kid through that, you know. And I'm like thinking about why am I projecting what I don't want? Exactly. What am I? You're doing? not the only one that goes through that. Yeah. What am I projecting here? Yeah. Magnifying what I don't want. Yeah. And so that's also part of what I actively do in the morning. I take that act. I what I don't have a morning energy? routine. I have a morning process. You know, I do Mike Tyson push-ups in the morning. That's my thing. And I, and I crush them. I raise my vibration up. And then the next step is I do 15 minutes of active visualization. For only what I do want, only what I want. But even that, it's not perfect because you know later in the day I'm still, yeah. you know. But but it definitely helps with that habitual construction because you're if you, what's Yogi Berra say? If you, if you don't know where you're going, you're gonna end up somewhere else. The truth. And that is 100% facts. Yeah. If you don't see it, man, you ain't going there. You can't hit a target. You can't see. You can't hit a target. You can't. But I had a mentor that uh, like the one that pushed me into entrepreneurship. And he had gone through a bankruptcy in the past, and I was so scared to even start. And uh, it's something I kind of reflect on often when I go through those, those times. Um, and he's like, dude, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to go through bankruptcy? Like, your kids will be as healthy, you're, you'll still be married as long as you've held it together correctly. Yeah. And he's like, bro, weren't you in the military before? This? Yeah, you know, I'd gotten out at this point because I'd started a business. And he's like, you, you, the worst thing that's going to happen, and you, like, you went to Iraq? Like, he's a civilian guy. Yeah. And he's looking at me like, You've done that, but you're worried about fucking money. Like you live in America. What he literally said, I want you to tell me what is gonna happen if that happens. And I told him, I painted the picture. I'm like, I'm probably gonna have to reach out to family. Yeah. I'm gonna tell that I'm gonna find like an apartment or I'm gonna have to live somewhere like with somebody's parents for a yeah. short period of time. I'm gonna like unwind it. I wrote down like this is the shit bottom for Austin Hancock. Yeah. And I was like, I'm alive and I got healthy kids. Yeah. Like, what's crazy though is like shit you've gone through in like combat zones and stuff like that. Like, you you slough it off, but when you think about the money thing, it's more fearful. And I think truly, guys like us and most people have more fear towards failure in the public eye like that. Yeah. Because what happens is you get put in a pine box when you come home from the teams or the yeah. Marine Corps. It's like, yeah, you know, fuck yeah, you did it. Bam. Yeah. It is what it is. We fucking did it. But when you're out here, it's like, you're more fearful and I'm more fearful and most people are more fearful, fearful of failure in the public eye. 
to themselves and to others. It's 100% my, probably my biggest fear. It's, but it, to guys like you and I, and I think to most people out there, uh, it's very common. And um, it's not, the, the only way that you solve it is you just fucking keep going, baby. Money fear is, is real. And it's that, that's the problem that if you can solve how, how, to, how to get people out of that. And I think a lot of that comes from that self-worth from your daily physical discipline. Absolutely. Helps, because it, it increases your confidence. So I know I've gotten more confident the more locked on I've gotten. And those negative thoughts are much, much less. Yeah, you know, they, they fade out a bit. They're come in, but they, the, well, the window closes fast. Yeah. The window closes on them pretty fucking fast. But no, I got this, man. I got this, right? And so they, those with that window used to stay open a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. It used to fucking stay open, yeah. man. In the winter, during the winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So stay open, man. And so that's what I've, I've been really liked about this chapter in my life where this phase, man, is is feeling good and feeling in control. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's close out and talk about what what's the next plan? What is so now you're getting now you got about a month left. Yeah. Where are you gonna move back to the States? What are you gonna do? Yeah, what's that's your plan. Yeah, man. So that that's gonna be I'm gonna be mobile, hostile, agile. But I love it. I'm definitely gonna have to I mean just business wise, I have to be even setting up banking and stuff. Like I can't even set up my strategy. True. Bro, the, the phone numbers and the banking and stuff, it doesn't doesn't jive. And yeah. so I'm having to uh, organize that piece, also the LLCs and all of that piece yeah. that I'm drinking out of fire hose learning, <laughs> which, which yeah, was I'm important. grateful I got a, uh, some help for some people and some contacts that are you know knowledgeable. But it's all that that part's here for, for me also is yeah, taxes and this. Nah, and, you know, that's you that's this, a world yeah. I don't understand. So I'm I'm picking that piece up. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna and I'm looking forward to that man, getting that autonomy back. Going back in and uh, getting reset and starting this company, man. Yeah, and yeah. so you're planning on moving to back to the United States. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be back. Putting in. some roots down. Yeah, I got, dude. I'm gonna have to, man. It's and I'm looking forward to it. So the the company is, you know, TCAB official is my, you know, my, my your social media TCAB dope. training. Yeah, drop all your handles yeah, and let everybody know. Bro. TCAB training. The website's taylorcavanaugh.com. You're going to get all the information there. It's dropping today, actually, so that's good. Sick, dude. So that, all of it's coming together, right? All of it's starting to piece together, and people can reach out to me, and if they think they can be better, they can. Yeah, how's, what's the best way for them to reach you? you go on my website, okay. taylorcavanaugh.com. It'll have, and just fill out the enrollment form. As you heard, he said earlier, he does a lot of YouTubes. I'm going to start picking up YouTubes. You're, you're 100% right of dropping more YouTube content. That's why we're here today. But uh, also, you know, they can hit you on Instagram too. I see you're on there yeah, all the so time. Yeah, so TCAP official is the IG, and cool. TCAP TV is the YouTube. If you want to get the long form, good, good hotness. This kind of shit. We got you. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, I appreciate you, bro, and I appreciate you coming out and doing this interview. Dude, I, I could not be more, it could not have been a more simple answer for me. I, I mean, I would have got to drive to Oklahoma to make it happen because it just made sense. Yeah, you said it best. You're like, I, I, what did you say? You said, I feel like the universe has called me to do this. Let's do this. Bro, let that's a piece listen to those signs be open because you just we were just shooting the shit yeah and then i said that i don't know what, hey man i'm gonna be in dallas i didn't even know where you're from yeah i know you didn't even know where i was from that's I don't true even know where you're from, bro. yeah i was like damn that's not far away yeah, at all and you're like hey bro you, if you want to jam out here i said all right let me show this okay i'm actually gonna be in dallas boom pink punk punk if you're willing to put in that little bit extra man it, the universe will conspire for you absolutely a thousand percent and you but you got to be one yes you can't be scared yeah let's do it let's, let's go do commit it. let's do it and figure it out we'll figure it out absolutely what's that let's say the your success is the, is the amount of times you say fuck it i'll figure it out <laughs> do that in, the, in all the barracks and in, in the marine corps it's always like improvise adapt and overcome i love that. and i love that i still i still live by that because you're either going to figure it out or you're not, but you're definitely not going to figure it out if you don't do it. Hell yeah, absolutely. Awesome, brother. I appreciate it. Dude, I appreciate the time. For bro. sure. Yeah. Hell yeah.